Good morning. Yesterday I was talking about two conditions that are very, very interesting to me. And these two, two conditions are unique and special in, in the way that one allegedly leads to the other, with the second being the sought-after condition, the reward for Raja Yoga, the royal path, the path of discipline. And those two conditions, of course, are first silence and its reward, clarity. And yesterday I was struggling to find with, to find that I talked about finding appropriate polarities for them. And I set that as my task <laughs> for pretty much the rest of my day and early into the morning. And at first, what was sticking with me, what was the rule of the source of my examination, my scrutiny, was that they both seemed enigmas in that appropriate polarities didn't come quickly to mind as all other polarities that I'd been delving into these last weeks that are becoming months. Unlike those predecessors, I couldn't find, I couldn't readily find, so quickly find, its polarity because of the nature. I was thinking of silence and that how it, the polarities that I found seem to take away from what silence is. Take away noise and you have silence. Not the silence that I'm thinking. It's not reducible. You can't take something away to adequately explain it. So a polarity that takes something away from the Zen concept of silence just doesn't work. It just doesn't sit right. So I have to find something that's not taking away. And then clarity, turbid, unclear. If you add dirt or debris to still water and stir it up, it becomes not clarity. So all the definitions that I was looking at, all the polarities wanted to add something to clarity. And again, one take away, another add, and both of them just illustrated the inadequacy 
of my search for polarity. So I started thinking of other more obvious and <laughs> it came to mind the North Pole and the South Pole. Pretty clear cut polarity. In fact, the mother of all polarities, you might say. The polarity on which the concept itself of polarity is based. And some other obvious polarities ran through my mind. And as well did many other things which will be the subject of today's talk. But first, let's go back to what prompted this examination, what prompted these reflections. And was I able to come up with some polarities for both silence and clarity that served my purposes related into, related to my reflections. And I want to add here that the reason I'm putting so much time on these two silence that leads to clarity is because they pose the biggest enigma in the condition I find myself in today. I talked about momentary glimpses of clarity in the same category that I put moments, rare moments that I release myself into pure bliss. And from the very beginning, a common thread that's run through all these presentations has been my <laughs> failure, my inability, more like my unwillingness, if I was really brutally honest, I haven't been willing to surrender my mind to silence. And yet, silence is something that I enjoy more than clarity, at least it occurs more often, and it's always in the interregnum, the space between heartbeats, breathing in and breathing out, that pause between words. is silence. So, I am probably more familiar. Silence is more common in my life than clarity or bliss. Yet, both or all three intrigue me, to say the least. So this pondering, what could I, what word could I use 
that doesn't take away from silence. What word could I use that doesn't add to clarity? And there are words. I did come up with some words that I'll share with you. And I'll put them in order of importance because let's deal with silence first. Silence is a precursor to clarity. So let's start with silence. What could I use that doesn't take away like the absence of noise, quiet, and it's communication. Surprise, surprise. The polarity that works for me is silence and communication. And that came first. That came first because this was the first part of my puzzle to Communicate does not take any element, take away anything from silence. It just encapsulates, expresses the opposite, which indeed was what I was searching for. And then, with clarity, I didn't want something that adds dirt to debris to clear water. You add that, stir it up, or even agitate, add a force, clarity is disrupted. So what could I use that didn't add to clarity, but yet suited my purposes? And I came up with doubt. And it worked for me. Clarity and doubt. So there's my two polarities that were took more time, were not as obvious to me, but for whatever reason, as the rest. And all of this made me come back to where I was originally. And I think all useful journeys, all great journeys, return to whence they began. So here was, of course, no exception. And we, I began by talking about polarities and non-duality. How do they accommodate each other? How is non-duality exclusive to polarities, which is, by definition, opposites, which at first glance, at first look, seem to be two. And I've addressed this, but I think it's time since I've maybe resolved my last issues with polarity. 
having long put duality to rest, everything is one. Anything else that appears to be other is illusory. And these, this perspective of me and you, the other, inside, outside, have long since disappeared. But dualities in the guise of polarities remain with me. And this is the real topic that I wanted to address, address today. Not only that I, I wanted to share that I had resolved for myself, polarities for these two concepts, silence and clarity. I resolved it for myself with silence, communication, clarity, and doubt. So I had to take a little different look at what clarity meant. Other than clearness, it obviously meant to me without doubt. So here we are, polarities, non-dualities, non-duality, can only be one. I made it plural, like there's more than one non-duality. <laughs> yeah, there's one. And there's one, and there's none. The one is contained within the none. But I thought of immediately yin and yang, yin and yang, the two elements, the white and black elements that fit together in the confines of a circle. So there seems to be a division within the circle but they're contained by each other. Not only contained by each other, but contained by the circumference of the circle. This is how this concept is expressed, this ancient Chinese observation of the condition of the world in which they found themselves in their attempt to explain. Now, if you look closely at the yin and yang, yin and yang, Westerners say yin and yang, <laughs> because we're so literal, we see Y, A, and G. But it's here in Taiwan, they would say yin and yang. The A has a more O sound. Even in my own Chinese name, hai yang. It's H-A-I-Y-A-N-G. So a Westerner would call me Hai Yang. <laughs> and that hurts my ears. Hai Yang. As in H-A-I, Hai. And then Yang, Y-O-U-N-G. And sometimes I use this Y-O-U-N-G spelling. Even that wrinkles a little bit because I like to use Y A N G, but I hate to hear it pronounced Hai Yang. So the Yin and Yang within that's confined in a circle that is defined by their relationship to each other in the black of the Yin. If you look closely, there's a small white dot. If you look at the white of the young, the masculine, you'll see a small 
black dot. And this is their answer to the, this is their measurement. <laughs> this is their response to polarities that within each apparent opposite, the other, a part of the other is contained. So this is one step along my observation of polarities contain the seed of each other within them. And let's go back to my global North Pole, South Pole, and the decrees between. As you move in either direction from the South Pole towards the North Pole, and through the series of degrees, you'll quickly notice that within the South Pole, elements, degrees of the North Pole are increasing until you get all the way to the top. And if you come the other direction is equally so. Each degree you go in the southerly direction contains more and more of the South Pole. Just like everything in life as day morphs into night, as life morphs into death. It's a very subtle process and it's obvious that the brightest part of the day, noon, high noon, contains the seed of the darkest of the night, the darkest moments of the night. It's all degrees. In the West, we measure death as a first it was the heart stopped. Now we're more sophisticated, supposedly, and it's when the brain stops functioning. We can measure these things. We can quantify, we can qualify, but the process from life to death isn't so clear-cut. It's a slower, within death are still the seeds of life, Within life there are the seeds of death. Just as we think that being born is when we pop out of our mothers. But actually it's much more subtle than that, isn't it? It's much more stretched out that life has begun within and it only becomes obvious when it's without. So we're born with the seeds of death and we die with containing the seeds of life. Not depressing at all. It's only 
as it should be, part of this whole cycle. Then let's look at another pretty obvious polarity. Male and female. Pretty opposite, wouldn't you think? But if you consider this, just as I considered degrees between along the circumference of North Pole to South Pole, look at it. Male and female. We're much more alike than dissimilar. <laughs> it laughs because we it makes me laugh because we talk about belly buttons and people ask, Do you have an innie or an Audi? Does your belly button stick out or does it sink in? And probably it has to do with the skill or the attention that was put into whoever tied that tube, that whoever cut and tied the tube that connect us with our mother. But if you think about the differences between any and Audi, and think about the difference between males and females, us males have an Audi. Our sister females have an any. We both have breasts. Some women have more fatty deposits in their breasts than most men. Yet some women have less fat, fatty deposits in their breasts than some men. So does your reproductive organ, is it an Audi or an Inni? So these huge differences start to become less and less obvious when you put them in perspective, when you look at chemistry, when you, even you look at biological functions of our bodies which define us as human beings. Without a body, <laughs> we can't be human. Again, similarities. So, is it so that within our masculinity, our femininity, the seeds of the other exist. Well, we're kind of taught that there's basically males and females, but if you really consider just talking about sexuality, you'll start to see that there's degrees some men have many degrees into that feminine realm. They've approached the feminine realm by many degrees, whereas many females share this in that they have more degrees of maleness. So that you see that Sexuality is not us and them, is not hetero and homo, or even bi. All these are very limited and not very, ex not very useful understanding of the realms of sexual, sexuality and sexual preference. So I've included three fairly obvious examples of polarity. After all, 
North Pole and the South Pole is where the very concept of polarities being opposites came to be. It was observing. It was as we sailed, as we experienced the world, as we discovered the world. So what does this have to do with duality or non-duality? Polarities have been and will continue to be very useful for me, both in my self-examination and both in offering to others to share So what seems as so obvious an example of two separate categories really are expressions of the same universal energy and light that all is consists of. And I just wanted to look quickly at those polarities of my first, of that started this <laughs> explanation, inquiry, journey, doubt, and clarity. You can't have a little doubt or a lot of doubt. Doubt is doubt. In the same way, you either have clarity or you don't. This is why it's so elusive. I would say that a little clarity or a lot of clarity is not the clarity that the sages have pointed to that reward us with, that grace us with vision. And I'm going to spend the next few adventures are adventures that I share with you on silence because silence is where it seems that we need to start on our journey to clarity.